a lot of times now homeowners will use the electric chainsaw, uh, which, you know, some of them can be pretty decent. So uh, I got this little one here. It's electric. I uh, had it for about uh, 10 years now, actually. And just put a new uh, blade and chain on it. Uh, funny story, actually, when we were just moving into this house uh, two years ago, I had the uh, I had it off and put it on the truck. Of course, moved the truck and never saw the blade again. Not sure where it went, but uh, uh, so we had to buy a new one and a new chain. Uh, the chain was dead wore out anyways, but uh, the blade either it fell down into the truck, never to be seen again, or into the grass. But I haven't seen it after looking for you know, almost two years now out in the pasture. So anyways. Um, these are decent uh, for small jobs, for sure. Uh, you know, they have a, a dog here, which is good. So, I mean, it's helpful. Got the uh, safety guard there. You know, you use chain oil just like you would in anything. Uh, that's another funny thing, too. One time uh, somebody told me a story about a lady that was using um, mixed gas in the chain oil here. I guess she thought the electric, confused whether it was electric or, uh, or gas. and. Uh, put mixed gas right in the chain oil here, which would be way too thin. I imagine it would just leak right out. Uh, but, uh, and of course, luckily it didn't light on fire or anything with electricity. Anyhow, that's a bit of an aside. And then this is, uh, this is our, you know, my main saw. I've had this one, I think this was my father-in-law's, uh, 25 years, probably. It's probably older than that, actually. It's a Husqvarna 272 XP. Uh, he was a, a, a logger and a, and a cutter for years in the winter. They're farmers in Saskatchewan and they go work in the winter on oh, the bush camps. So uh, this is a great saw. Uh, it's heavy duty. Um, you know, it's started to well for years. Uh, looks like it has a pretty new blade on it and uh, somewhat new chain. We'll give it a quick touch up though, show you how to go over a sharpening chainsaw. Let's do a quick uh, maintenance on this. We'll blow it all off, uh, clean it out and uh, give the chain a bit of a touch up. So always good to uh, blow out all the crap that's stuck. Look at all this uh, sawdust and oil, of course, around the oiler. Where the oiler comes out, uh, it uh, gathers up here on the uh, on the handle on the saw. And uh, of course, here's where it's cooling, uh, sucking in air. Uh, you want to make sure you blow some of that out too. And then just to you know, clean up your saw in general. So just give that a bit of a low pressure blow here. All the nooks and crannies. That's look at that. That's pretty stuck on there. There. Use a little more pressure here. Stick your air gun in there. All right. So you know, quick uh, blow off and and wipe down. Before and after use is always nice if you can spare the time. And then, uh, you know, end of season or beginning of season, first time, you could do a bit of a deeper clean, is nice. I don't think I cleaned this after last season. That's what happens, things just get put away, that's, that's reality. It'd be nice if everything uh, got winterized and maintained properly every year, but I'm sure most of us just can't do that. Or just don't do that. I'm sure we could if we really wanted to, and I'm sure some guys do. That's clean enough for me. So uh, yeah, here's, the, here's some other things that you can do for uh, winterizing it, you know, take off the chain uh, and uh, clean out that, that rail off the bar, out of the bar there, like I mentioned. You know, want to clean out these oiler holes that are in there. Those oiler holes get clogged that are in here. And uh, what happens is they'll, the oil will leak right out of these machines and all of a sudden you'll pick it up one day and have a whole pool of oil down here. And usually that's because the oiler somewhere in there is clogged and instead of running down onto the chain rail here, sorry, instead of running out onto the bar rail, uh, it just runs past that and then straight down here and out. 
the saw. So that's, uh, that's uh, you know, important to clean that up. Another good thing is when you take the chain off, soak it in an oil bath or in your parts cleaner, get all the sap and uh, oil and dirt that's stuck in all these links out. That's uh, helpful to clean that out for sure, at least once a year. And then, uh, you know, just check it over, check your pull cord, check your uh, air filter. Make sure that's still in, oops. Make sure your pull cord's still in decent shape. This one is got lots of compression on this saw for sure. You know, make sure your uh, switches are in good working order. Choke. And then uh, when you put it back on, put that chain back on after cleaning it, of course you want to lube it. Give it a quick lube, especially for storage. And then uh, when you go to run it again, you're going to use the, the chain bar oil that you have. So, okay, best way to sharpen your chainsaw is uh, to put it in a device. And a long time ago, I made these um, non-marring uh, pieces so that I don't put things on the knurled vice edges if they don't need to be. Uh, so this will really protect the bar of the chainsaw for sure. Uh, and uh, they're just uh, pieces of, of chromed metal that I bent to fit that. You can buy them ready-made or you can just make something yourself. And uh, it just stops things from getting marred in the vise. So clamp it close to the saw, of course, because that's where all the weight is. Nice and tight. And then, uh, of course, you've got to have the right sized file for this. So different size file for different size saws. This is for the uh, electric chainsaw. It's really small. Uh, generally, a 3 8 inch chain takes a 7 seconds inch file. The 325 chain, I think, take a 3 16 inch file. And then the really small chains is uh, 5 30 seconds. I'm not sure if this is uh, the smallest one, but uh, that's generally what they take. And uh, if you don't know, you can always check it online. Uh, Google will, will figure it out. Give, put in the saw and the saw model and uh, model number and, uh, and or on the chain box. It'll have the size of the chain and generally what file size to use. So the thing about sharpening chainsaws, I think anybody who's run a chainsaw for a bit or runs one regularly should know this. And I mean, there's, there's, there's sharpeners available. Uh, there's, uh, you know, there's electric ones, little grinders on them and stuff, but this is really simple to do and uh, anybody should be able to do that. So actually take a look at this tooth here. The first one I looked at here, I don't know how good you can see that, but look at that tooth. It's not perfectly straight across the top. So it's had a bit of a chip taken out on this side and that needs to be perfectly straight. There needs to be a bevel on the bottom of that tooth needs to come to a real sharp point at the end and that curl there that hook needs to be the right dimension as well so that'll all work out with the right size file once you run your file through there so let me uh, see if I can't get a close-up view filing a couple of these teeth off teeth here okay so a lot of a lot of saws will have a line here uh, a laser etched line That'll give you a guide as to where to put your your file, but uh, it's not rocket science. You can see where that you know the angle of each of these teeth is, and all the ones on the on the right side will be done like this, pushing forward to make the cut, and then picking your file up and putting it back on, pushing forward to make your cut. So you just run it like that, and you can see this is all exactly the right size for the hook and the tooth goes right underneath there, is going to bring a nice straight edge to that. Keep your file straight as you go across. It shouldn't take more than three to five passes. Get a nice sharp, look at that, you can feel that already. It's like a knife edge. All right, and then you just keep moving down to the next one. I can see here I got a there's a burr right on top of that. That's sharp now, you can feel that. Not sure what I was cutting last with it, but they're all looking a bit tattered. A lot of times they only take three to five. This is gonna take five to seven. Oh that feels sharp now. So you know what's a good idea too? Is to uh, mark your first one. So I was probably three back here. So just mark it, and then you get around to that, you'll know where you were. 
don't have to go around again. Although if you got good eyes, you should be able to tell. Just touch that one up again. I think I got that one. Yep. And then just keep moving along on this side until you got them all. All the right-handed ones, I guess you could call them. You need a fair amount of pressure on the file, not a ton, but you need to be able to get any burrs off and get some material off there. And you can feel them, they're sharp. And then what you do is uh, you move your, turn your saw around and you'll do the other side. But let me get through all these ones first here. Now lastly, after you've done this on both sides, which might take you like 20 minutes, half an hour at the most. See, look at that, I'm already back to that, that black one. That's how fast it went around. That's incredible. Anyhow, uh, once you get those done, you need to make sure that this hook, the rasp, is a little bit lower than the uh, tooth. So once this gets worn down, these will start poking up, but uh, just want to make sure that's a little bit lower if it's too high you'll just get kind of powdery sawdust instead of chips and that's because the tooth isn't going in far enough and if they're too low then it's a really aggressive cut and it can be so aggressive that it can stall out your saw sometimes or just bite it hard and uh, you know make it uh, a little harder to control so that's key let me turn this saw around to the other side and, and do all these ones uh, so here's the black one that I marked earlier start there again oh good burr on that one just took that burr off now some guys will use guides there's guides available uh, which are helpful, but if you do this enough, you can do it. I actually, actually don't even need to do this enough. It's pretty easy to do. But uh, guides can be helpful. They help you hold your uh, file at the right angle, generally 30 degree angle, but some some chains are different. And they also, you can have another another guide that goes over top of this and then and then files this down to the right height. Generally what I've been told is that if your sawdust is coming out like a powder or fine instead of in chips, then you should go around and take two or three uh, swipes with a file, flat file, on these to knock them down a bit. Then try it again and, and you, know, you should have pretty good sized chunks, chunks of uh, wood chips coming off your saw. And it should cut fairly well. Oh, then we're already back at that marked one. So there you go. That's that's the chainsaw already sharpened both sides. Uh, so let's take a look down here further. Let's see if any of these look like they're higher or lower. So you got to make sure that that is lower than this. They generally look like they are. But let me just quickly show you how to knock a bit of that off. So a cross cut or a single cut file will work. You just want to. Couple swipes, and you can see they're already taking material off there. Make sure not to hit your tooth at the same time. And that's, uh, that's all it takes to. Uh, to do those. I'll have to try it this year and see. Last year it was running fine. So another couple of things that uh, you'll want to know of course is uh, you need some two cycle engine oil. I just buy it in these tiny containers because it's 50 to 1 so you don't need much for a season of cutting. Usually this last couple of seasons of, of cutting for me. Um, 
and uh, you know they're like six or seven bucks Canadian of course probably two bucks American and of course you'll need some bar oil uh, of course you'll need engine oil and then you need bar oil uh, bar oil is uh, of course what goes in and lubricates this bar and uh, that's critical for all your saws electric and gas and don't be like the woman and put your mixed gas in <laughs> to your uh, electric saw here's where you uh, on the Husqvarna and most saws where you put your gas in here let's see what we got for gas today oh, looks like maybe I emptied it out last year so that's good and then you put your bar oil right in here different ones will have different spots the electric one goes on top this one goes right here let's put some more in there That's right at the top there. Yep. Clean everything off as you go because look at all the gunk that gets stuck under everywhere. Don't need that inside the oiler either, clogging up those holes. Clogging up the oiler holes and then causing that leak that I mentioned earlier. something in here and see how good anything at all oh yeah seems about half full anyways right now yes I didn't empty it so there we go she's ready to run should have mentioned is uh is tightening your chain so this one's pretty much uh close to perfect it's a little tiny bit loose uh it should just hang about halfway down the rasps uh and if uh if you find that it's not moving as soon as you touch the gas then it's probably a little too tight and of course if it ever pops off you know it's way too loose uh and of course if that hangs down and the tooth is coming right out of the groove there then it's too loose let's check the uh, electric chainsaw electric chainsaw for the homeowner it's even easier you just loosen this one off but this one's perfectly set if you ask me you just loosen this off of the front you give this a twist forward it says plus and minus so plus to tighten it and then uh, here's where you put the bar oil in this machine and she's full right to the top of course, with this one, you don't need a gas can, you need an electrical cord. And that can sometimes be a pain in the ass, but...
right, so I uh, just brought this back in the shop here after cutting some of that wood. And uh, last few things I'll say for this video on chainsaws. Uh, number one, uh, the tension on the chain. Uh, as you saw right at the beginning of the video, I mentioned that this chain was just barely tight enough, I thought. It was a touch loose. And now, after using it for the first time in the season, I do notice that it's uh, it's fairly loose. These uh, rasps were hanging, a couple of them are hanging just about outside of the bar, where it rides in the bar there, in the rail. And so, uh, they should, this should be tightened up. So we go ahead and do that. I think this saw here came with a tool like this, uh, which uh, just fits these um, these here. And all you have to do is loosen that up on whatever saw you have. And as you saw in the electric saw, it was completely different. And generally, either you can pull the bar out from from the uh, saw, or some of them have a uh, another screw here that you would that you put a screwdriver in and turn it out, and that would move the the blade out. Uh, but this one here. As you can see, if I just move the blade up a bit, that tightens it right up there. So this can just be adjusted like that. It can also be adjusted with that adjustment there. But if I just raise this up a touch, which is probably where it wants to be, tighten these back up. I get a pretty tight chain there. Not pretty tight, but just the right the right amount. You don't want it too tight, of course. So that's, that's good. See how it's... Uh, if I pull it down, it's still not pulling out of there, but it's not so tight that it would bind up or anything. So this, you know, they have to go around the end and uh, and not ever bind as it comes around the, the bar in the end there. So that's uh, that's a perfect chain, I'd say, right there. Uh, it's, if you pull it down, it's still not coming out of there and, uh, and it still feels nice and loose. So I'm going to go ahead and cinch that up there. Next time, uh, every time you, you use your saw, you should double check that. <clears throat> All right, and then another item that uh, I, I don't think I mentioned completely was uh, actually mixing the uh, mixed gas for any of these saws. So uh, they usually have, uh, they're usually a 50 to one ratio. Some saws are 40 to one, but generally if you run them, you know, 40, anywhere around 40 to 50 to one, you'd be safe. And so you have to sometimes do a calculations. This particular bottle has 190 mils in it, and so you can go to Google or, you know, if you know your ounces and milliliters, figure it out. The saw at 40, at 50 to 1 is supposed to have 3.2 ounces per gallon. And this little gas can that I have that I use is a gallon can and it has half a gallon of gas in it. So that means it really only wants 1.6 ounces in this much gas. And so I did the calculation and 3.2 ounces is 95 milliliters. So half of that, 1.6 ounces, would be around 50 milliliters. So then you have to guess. <laughs> oh yeah, if you have a measuring thing, that's fine. So this is 190 milliliters, so 50 would be about a quarter of this. So, you know, it's 190 obviously is close to 200. 50 is a quarter of 200. So that's how much of this you just put in there. So I hadn't mixed this uh, yet because uh, the saw had enough gas in it or I had gas from another source. And so I just poke a big hole, a bigger hole in here. And we'll add that much more in there. A couple of squirts that, <laughs> that seems like a quarter. So very highly technical, scientific measurement there. But uh, that's it. You mix it up in there before you use it, slosh it around a bit. And that's good for your, uh, for your saw. And like I said, I always put a plastic bag or a cup or something over top of these. If it had a cap, I'd put that on just to keep it from evaporating out into the uh, shop air. And then finally, what I'll say is uh, safety. And safety is, uh, is paramount. You saw me out there without hearing protection, without eye protection. Well, I had glasses, sunglasses on. So, uh, you know, I did have that, but you really should use hearing protection. These are, these are more than enough decibels that you shouldn't, surely shouldn't be running it for more than an hour at, the, at that decibel level. And there's a chart online that you can go how many decibels for how long a period that you should at that point use hearing protection, but always a good idea to wear your muffs if you can. And then, you know what, if you're, if you're, if you're cutting trees down where there's dead branches hanging over top and those branches could fall down, uh, and knock you in the head, then you should have either a hard hat or a bump cap. I have a, a cap that has a hard shell in it. It's a bump cap. Those are uh, very good, really comfortable. And then lastly, you know, really good shoes, of course. You should wear really good shoes or boots. 
I had on uh, boots out there. You know, steel toed are great, of course, but you know, with a saw, you're you're running that saw close to your feet. You're stepping on branches. You're stepping over logs and things. So sturdy footwear is key. That's something you definitely want to have. Hope you saw learned something there. I hope uh, that was interesting or at least entertaining video. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks a lot.